What's going on DDO players? Axel here. Welcome to part two of my DDO new player guide. In this part I'll be walking you through the first quest which is a tutorial quest in the game. Now if you don't want to watch spoilers for this quest or you want to walk through this part yourself feel free to do that. You can check out part three of this new player guide by clicking the annotation that's popping up right now. And part three is the most important. It's very important. Definitely check that out. In part three, I'm going to be walking you through all kinds of basic navigational things that you need to know to play the game. It's going to make it a lot easier for you if you view that part. So I, I highly encourage you to view part three. But as far as part two, we'll go ahead and get started here. As you can see, when you wake up on the shores, I won't explain the whole story to you, but basically the, the plot of this uh, Korthros setting is that you've woken up from a shipwreck. And as you wake up, you'll see there's a rogue here who wants asking you to come talk to him, and he's going to help you get to your first quest. So, Can you talk? Speak to we'll me. click on him, and he'll explain the story to you. I'm not going to walk you through that, but we'll, if you want to read the story, feel free to read the windows yourself, but I'm not going to go through it. So after we talk to him, he's going to have us follow him up to the camp here, which is where we're going to get our first weapon. Here we are. So to get your first weapon, you'll just talk to him. And you'll select what you want. Because we're a two-handed fighting build, we're going to go with Great Axe. It's the only two-handed weapon on this list. Go ahead. Give a few swings. Okay, and in this point it's going to explain to you how to equip a weapon. To equip a weapon, you have to go to your inventory tab by clicking the I key on your keyboard. So once you do that, you'll get this screen that'll pop up, and you'll see the weapon right here. So once you see it, to equip it, you just double click. It's as easy as that. And then we'll close the window. And then to attack, <coughs> you'll of course just hit the left mouse key. Okay, so after we get our first weapon, we'll talk to him again. He's going to explain to you that this fellow over here is going to lead you up to your first quest. So we're going to go talk to him. And then we're just going to follow him up this hill to our first quest. Okay, so you'll encounter a lot of these twirly symbols throughout the game. Anytime you see one of these twirly symbols, it represents the opening or the beginning of a quest. So to enter the quest, you're just going to click on this opening. You don't actually have to click on this twirly symbol here. Just click on the opening, and you'll see this quest window come up. And normally throughout the game, you'll get the option of playing the quest on one of three difficulties, normal, hard, or elite. For some quests, there's very few quests which are solo quests, and in that case you don't get to select your difficulty, and this is one of them. So we'll just go with solo, because that's our only option, and you'll hit enter to enter. Is this Salimus, the cleric you were sent to find? Okay. So once inside, you'll see a cleric, which we need to go and talk to. You can read the story again if you want to. I'm not going to walk you through it. I'm going to walk you through it. I'm not going to uh, explain the story to you. So she's going to give you a spell called Protection from Death, which is the only time in the game you get this quest, get the spell, and this basically prevents you from dying. And they they do that only because they don't want you to die in this first tutorial quest. The whole purpose of this tutorial quest is to show you how to play the game, or at least show you some basic features of the game. Okay. So. You can't go through this gate. There's parts of this quest where if you don't listen to what the NPC is saying, you can be confused about where to go. And if you didn't spot it yourself, there's a ladder right here. And to advance in the quest, we need to walk up this ladder. And she wants us to drop down this little hole right here. So to advance, we'll just drop down this hole. To get, and that gets us past the gate. Okay, now this is where they kind of teach you about encounters. This is going to be your first monster encounter in the game. Right up here we see a 
Suwagan, which is an enemy monster that we're going to walk up and kill. So combat is pretty simple in this game when you're playing a melee character. You can just click the left mouse key to swing your weapon and attack. The game, unlike other MMOs, plays like a platformer. The combat is live action. You don't stand in one place and place, in, such as in other MMOs, you actually will be moving around, hitting things in, in real time. Okay, the next lesson this quest gives us is levers. Levers like this you'll see often throughout the game. Some can be hidden, but more often than not, they're wide out in the they're out in the open like this. So, pull a lever, you just click on it, and it'll open this gate over here. Okay, we'll just continue the path. Got another lever right here. Okay, now this section is going to explain to you your. It's going to be your first real encounter. There's going to be several monsters that drop down that we're going to have to kill. And this gives you a bit of a taste of combat in DDO. Okay, now this part of the quest is one of the main reasons I wanted to make a video actually walking through the quest. This part is uh, the game doesn't do a great job of explaining how to advance from here, and it can be really confusing if you're brand new to the game. Now, to advance to the next part of the quest, we have to get through this locked door. And we can't go through it because it's locked and we need to find the key. The key if you it's easy to miss where the key is if you didn't listen to what the NPC is saying, but the key is actually down at the bottom of this water well right here and the game does not explain very well in this tutorial how to swim now to swim the problem with uh, swimming is to swim down you need to move the camera and the game doesn't explain how to move the camera properly because if we don't move the camera and we jump in the water it's just gonna have us go forward and backwards we're not gonna be able to go down into the water so to go down, actually go down into the water, what you're going to need to do is move the camera. And to move the camera, you can do it two ways. The first way to do it is to hold the right mouse key, or the right mouse button, and drag it. And that's going to let you move the camera any direction you want. And to swim down, we need to point the camera down and then use the W key to move forward. Now the other way to do this is to hit your T key, T as in taco, on your on your keyboard and that will turn your mouse into uh, do the same thing as holding right your right mouse key it's going to put you in mouse look mode and then you can use your mouse to navigate the camera so pick one of those two ways and you're gonna point the camera down and hold it down and that's gonna let us swim down and pick up the key so when we're down here we will click on the key and to swim upwards no matter what way the direction is uh, direction the camera is facing you're going to hold the space bar key. Okay so once you've done that we're going to jump on the ladder and mark, make our way over to the locked door. When I was just starting this game I <laughs> the first few times I was playing I, got, I was playing I got very confused because I couldn't figure out how to get to that key so I hope that part in the video helps you out. Now these are rest shrines. These you see throughout the game. This is a resurrection shrine which will raise you if you've died. This is a rest shrine which 
click on it and you can use it and you'll sit your character will sit down and rest a while and this will refill all of your spell points and it will refill a portion of your hit points okay so now we've we're done resting we're gonna go up here to the rogue again and this part of the quest is going to explain to you what traps are in DDO traps are an important part of this game throughout the dungeon you'll see traps similar to this now traps can traps come in all different forms this is an example of uh, one type you'll see these blades and obviously we can't go through the door because that blade that trap there is gonna hurt us or kill us so in order to disable these traps you need to either have a party member in your group that's capable of disabling the trap such as a rogue or an artificer or sometimes you can make you can kind of sidestep the trap and kind of use your your gaming skills your twitch skills to get through it but in this case we're going to talk to the rogue here and he's going to disable the trap for us and to disable traps rogues need to perform a search skill which is this mouse this uh, magnifying glass here at the bottom and it will show rogues where this trap box is and once they find that they can click on it and disable the trap okay so now the trap is disabled we can go through the door and coming up here is another example of how to use the search skill well excuse me that's not quite there yet we'll, we'll get to that a little later in the quest Right now we're going to have to pull another lever, get to the door, and we've got another fight. And this part introduces you to red names. As you can see, this Swagen High Priestess is a red name. These are just enemies which are a bit tougher than your standard monsters. These basically are mini-bosses. Do a little more damage, they have a lot more hit points. They always represent more of a threat than your regular monsters. Okay. Now we're going to follow the rogue to the treasure chest. Now, these are prevalent throughout the game. This is what you are really looking for in your quest. This is where you can uh, get your goodies and your loot. Good stuff like gold and equipment will be dropping in quests and chests like this that you'll encounter throughout the game. So we've got a bit of armor, a ring, and a shield. To equip our items that we've collected, same thing as your weapon you're just going to open up your inventory by pressing the I key and you're going to click on the items you want to equip and each space here in your inventory tab will represent an equipment slot and as you equip the item it will go into the appropriate gear slot okay so in advance we're going to we're going to go ahead and follow this rogue up to the wall here and this is what I was talking about earlier um, we've got to use our search skill here. Throughout the game you'll also have hidden doors and paths that you'll have to find. And to find them you need to be in the general area of the hidden door and use the search function which is down here is the magnifying glass. And in order to find the door you actually have to have a high enough search skill. But as a paladin we typically will not have a high search skill. But for purposes of this quest, this door is this hidden door is f uh, findable by everybody, even if you don't have any points in search. So to find it, we're going to click the search button, and then the hidden door will pop up. Okay, now we're almost done with the quest. To finish, we're going to talk to the cleric here. and she's going to offer us a reward. So pick whichever one you like. I'm going to go with the Great Axe again. Okay, and that's it for our first quest. After you're done, you'll click on this door and it will lead you out to the main area of Corthos. And that's where we'll pick up for part three. And in part three, I'll be explaining all kinds of basics you need to know to get started in the game. Part three is also going to be the last part of this series. I'll explain menus and how to join a group, how to interact with NPCs. I'll teach you what 
taverns are, a lot of a lot of different things you need to know. So I highly encourage you, if you watch no other part in this series, definitely watch part three. So until next time, I will see you at part three, and thanks for watching.